Hello and welcome to lesson 1 of week 13. In this lesson, we are going to look at how to create functions in Python. My name is Mildred. A function is a block of code which only runs when it is called and it is the best way to create code that we will use in multiple pages or that we will call over and over again to do multiple tasks. And so we write this kind of code in something we call a function and what we do is call that function to execute a tax every time we want a specific tax to be executed. In Python, we create a function using the def keyword like this, and then we supply a name for the function. Let's say we want a function that greets people when they come to a page. After the name of the function, we put a pair of parentheses, a colon, and then we call that Python relies heavily on indentation, which means that the next line after the colon is going to be indented and then you say print hello world or print hello and welcome whatever you want to print in the print statement this is a function that we say does not take anything in the parentheses in this parentheses if we supply an argument let's say name whatever we specify in the parentheses of a function definition is called a parameter whenever we call that function and we supply Anything in the parentheses of the function call, we call that supply an argument. So they both mean the same thing I mean, in the context of that function, but it's just that they are called different names at different points. So on creation of function, whatever you add in the parentheses is a function parameter. On calling the function, whatever you add is the argument that replaces the parameter. And so we have this that doesn't have any parameter. And then when we save this, we are going to call the function using the name of the function and a pair of parentheses. And this time, it's not going to be indented because we are coming out of the function definition block. So read more about indentation and syntax in Python. Refer back to previous lessons to see um, what we said about Python syntax and how um, blocks of code are indented for um, the scope of execution ends with the indentation of that block and so when i save this and i run i'll get printed out hello world to the page if this function were to take a parameter let's say name and we want to print i like using the format string um, you can do it any way you want i want to say print hello and name like this okay and then when i greet i'm going to pass an argument now which is my name like this and say print mildred now because this is not a variable it is a string i'll do it like this and when i clear and run what i will get here now is hello mildred how are you so we know how to define a function that takes parameter and a function that does not take parameter we can have more than one parameter in the function definition and we can say we want name age location and we want to say hello name or let's send it like this name is age years old and lives in location like this so this way when we greet we will supply all of the arguments in the same order so the order matters the first parameter for the function definition is a name so the first argument must be the name the parameter for the function definition is the age the second argument has to be the age the third parameter is the location and so the third argument has to be the location and when I save this I'll clear and run you will see that now we have John is 25 years old and lives in New York. We can use function to do something. So let's go to like a real world scenario where we have a site and let's say for instance we want to be calculating things like grades. Let's say we want to create a function that calculates sum, right? Let's assume that there is no inbuilt function that does this. We want to calculate sum. We want sum of what? So maybe sum of two parameters that are passed in and we'll say return a plus b in python you use the return statements to return an evaluation in a function definition so we don't have to use the print statement because when i call the cal sum like this and i supply one and two it's going to print out three because i say return the evaluation of a and b if we want to print out now we can say print and then we're going to print out what the return value of one and two is so this way we can see it printed out to the screen but in software development you're not going to be printing out to the screen you want to do something with the evaluation results which is not printing at the back end so your function definition will have return statements and not print statements when we start applying this to software development 
well, except in cases where you actually explicitly want to print for testing but uh, most of the time return statements are what we use and then when we call the definition we'll ask it to return something and then maybe at the front end if we want to display that thing then we're going to begin to use other methods that we can use to display that in the view so this is an example of creating a function without parameters with parameters using a print statement using a return statement we have something we call arbitrary arguments now in python when you see things like args in the function definition it just means like the argument but if we do not know in advance the number of arguments that the function call will have we'll put an asterisk in front of the parameter definition so we'll just say the parameter name is args it can be any name let's say i want this to be a different function so let's create a different function and i'll say this is def let's say for instance students and i don't know in advance what i am going to be passing in here but i know that i want to give it an arbitrary um, argument and i'm going to use the asterisk sign and then the name of the argument let's say number and then i'll put a column and then if i want to print out in a loop we can do that but we're not going to look at that now let's say i want to print out the last entry here so i can now say print what i want to print let's say f the last entry is and it's going to be no minus one and now when i make a function call and i say students one to ten and i clear and run i'm going to get the last entry is ten so this is how you can use um, arbitrary arguments I mean, there's a better application of this in software development this is an illustration to show you the function of this and when we get to part three and we start developing our systems we will see how we use this and tie it up into what makes better sense but you have to practice this and understand that this exists and these are the uses or this is how it is used so we can use this and we don't have to use a print statement we can return we can loop through let's say what we are passing in is a list and we want to start looping through that list we don't even have to use the arbitrary argument if it's a list okay but we can decide to use it like this and let's say for i in students print i and we'll run this and we'll have it printed one to ten down and we're printing out in a loop everything that is contained in the definition if we don't want it to be like this we don't have to do this like this which means that what we're passing in is a list and then we have to make sure that this is a list here and then when i save this and i run i'll clear we'll have the same thing happening one to ten so these are the various ways we create functions we use functions we can have keyword arguments like let's say we want to define um, keyword arguments where the order of the arguments will no longer ma matter we do something like let's say dev student and this time i want to specify keywords like say highest and then lowest like this and then i'm going to use a column and then i want to print out maybe the student with the highest score is highest or want to print out highest plus lowest or we want to return highest plus lowest so let's use the return statement since that is what we are actually going to be using more um, when we start applying this to software development so when i call student now I will supply this as keyword argument highest or well, let me supply lowest first lowest is equal to 10 highest is equal to 20. so now you see that the order will not matter anymore because it is keyword argument so it's going to look for whether highest comes before lowest lowest comes before highest it doesn't matter we are calling this function and supplying the arguments using the keywords and so when i save this and i run we are going to have it printed out um, we said return so it's not going to print and if we want to print we have to print what we have returned so i can put a print in the function call and then i'll have it printed um, as 30 because we are having the sum of the highest and the lowest we have something we call arbitrary keyword arguments just like the arbitrary arguments i know in python we write arguments most of the time you see arguments written like args and you see keyword argument written keyword args like this when we want to have an arbitrary keyword argument we don't know in advance how many keyword arguments we're going to have we put double asterisk and put keyword args or you put a name for the keyword argument like that so i'll use keyword args like that i don't know exactly what we will have 
let's assume that we are going to have maybe a least supply to this and we don't know how many we are going to have we want to print this out as a dictionary for instance what i will do here now is to say let's say print keyword ads let's see how this comes out it should come out as a, as a dictionary so we're printing keyword ads and so when we call this now and i say i'm calling this student this time what i will do is to supply a list like this i do not know in advance what i'm going to be supplying but i don't want to supply a dictionary i want to just supply call students and then i'll supply all of the arguments that i want which is name is equal to john name is age is equal to 25 city is equal to new york the second time i call it i don't know how many keyword arguments i'll give i want to pass a new value name is equal to bob age is equal to 30 city is chicago phone number is there i can call it a fourth time or a third time and supply something different totally different like this and then it's going to give us let's say email is equal to let me use me at me dot com and then we close this now you can see that we have called this function three times and in every time we call the function what we are printing here is keyword args every time we call the function we supply a new set of keywords the first one has only name age and city second has the phone and the third has an email added when i save this and i run you will see that we we'll have three sets but everything is a dictionary using the keyword argument has the key and then the value supplied as the value so this is where keyword arguments are very useful you also see a lot of use of this when we start the applying this to developing the back end of our site sometimes you have a list of arguments but there is something you do not want to be left empty all the time let's say we have students and we have this called the name we have the age and we have the country for instance but we want it to get filled in country if the student leaves it blank so let's say country is equal to us so this is how we provide um, default value for um, a function definition like this. So we we'll put the function um, parameter that has a value at the end or that has a default value at the end like that. And then we are going to say, every time we want to print, let's say we'll print this statement. I, I am name and I am age and I am years old and I am from whatever country if during the function call i can say students and i want to say john 25 canada i can call students john and 25 and i'll say john student country equal to canada anyhow i do this when i clear here i save and i run because i provided a value for this is going to print out canada i provided the value using the keyword for the end the first one i did not use any keyword just values second one i just provided john and the age without a country so that i can by default fill out us and the third time i do this using keyword arguments they're all going to print out completely the same and replace us with canada for the function calls where i supplied the argument for the country with the value of canada so when we have a list like we're passing the list we can use a for loop we're passing a dictionary we can loop through um, we just define give it a name let's say we have for instance i'm passing a list we've done this previously but let's say the students now this is going to be a list of students so let's say list students and then what i want to do is that for students in list students print out students or return students in the case of when we apply it there like that and so when we have something like a student list Now, you have to take this very seriously before, because most technical interviews you will have will always want to test you on things like this. Write a function that takes a list as, an, as a parameter or takes a list as an argument and does X and Y and Z. And so this is where this comes in handy. So we have the student list to be John, Mary and Steve. We want them um, to call the function student and pass in the student list as the argument for the function call. And when I save this and I clear and I run, I'm going to have John Mary Steve printed out to the page. Now, this is not all about functions and how we're going to use it. We're going to look at functions in an advanced form later on. But in the next lesson, we're going to look at how to use lambdas in Python. Thank you and see you in the next lesson. Mm -hmm.